so uh, welcome to another lesson in computer science. Today, uh, we're going to make this. So um, this is probably, mm, I wouldn't say the greatest game ever, but definitely in the top five, like the original Zelda, uh, Super Smash Bros. I, I've been told that, that, that I was wrong in that. Uh, so anyway, this is what we're going to make today. And we could probably make this, um, you know, in the same way we made the Pong game without object-oriented programming, but it would be pretty tough. And in order to make something like a platformer um, or a Pokemon-style game, which this is this is building towards po a Pokemon-style game, you it would be very difficult to do without object-oriented programming because you would just the for one you're going to notice that our code is going to be a lot shorter than it would be probably half the length than if we weren't using our object-oriented programming that we've been learning and it's just really would be very confusing with lots of global variables and stuff like that well i don't have to do that with this so hopefully you enjoy this lesson learn something and see the appreciation for the theory of object-oriented programming so what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and create a new module. Um, actually, what I'd like you to do is create a new folder called Alien War. And we're just going to call this module Alien War. All right, we will be dealing with uh, images today, um, and hopefully you'll add sounds. So if you will go to your, the I have it uploaded here to my classroom. Under Alien War, you'll notice that there are a series of images. These are the ones that I have chosen. Feel free to change them. So you see that we've got two different aliens, uh, the regular alien, the hurt alien, and the dead alien, which you could see their eyes have been X'd out because they are now dead. Uh, we also have uh, two different kinds of bullets. I made those bullets. I'm very proud of them. Uh, the blue bullet and the pink bullet. And I just used a star background for the background. Now, I'm not expecting you to remember every little detail from Pi Game Zero. And in fact, despite how often I've used it, I still had to go back to my documentation and check how, you know, how you're supposed to do things. And, and that's totally normal. Uh, the first step, though, should be to import PGZ Run. Uh, if you're using a new device, you'll need to make sure that you have it installed by going to Manage Plugins. And you want to make sure that you have your Pi Game Zero... Uh, and Pygame installed. If you don't, uh, you know there is PG zero. You can type in PG zero, and it should find it. If you don't have it installed, you'll have an install. Mine, as you can see, I have an uninstall. Um, and there you go. All right. So the first step is that we typically will go ahead and set. A couple of constants so being in all caps indicates that they're constants and and pi game zero uses these values to set the width and height of the window and what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of subclasses of a subclass of actor so let me go ahead and kind of draw out how this is going to look. And I, I always like you to be looking at class diagrams. Making your own class diagrams is something we work on in CS2 and 3 a lot. So we have in the Pi Game Zero module, which we've just imported, we have what's called the actor class. And we have made actor objects and we've set their images and all that stuff. They have uh, several different things that they can do. Well, we're going to directly subclass that with a class called alien. And the advantage here is I no longer have to make an actor, set all its costumes and everything. I can have all the stuff I need to make my actor and alien nicely 
encapsulated in this class, in this block of code. Much the same way I did with the funky turtle when I subclassed the turtle yesterday. But we're also going to subclass this again. Most of the behaviors of our aliens don't matter if they're the blue alien on the left or the pink alien on the right, but there are a few things that will be different. So we're going to go ahead and make a subclass called blue alien and another subclass called pink alien. And the thing is, is that a blue alien and pink alien, I would say maybe 95% of their code is right here. They have 95% of everything we need to do with them is going to be in common with the actor class. And I don't want to remake all that stuff. We're going to take care of them maybe, and I'm just making these numbers up, but another 4% of that code is going to be right here. And then there's a tiny little bit you're going to see. It's probably going to be about um, six, six or seven lines of code out of the entire thing that will be different for blue and pink. Now, think about what we would have to do if we were to do this without, without object-oriented programming. Well, it would, it would be darn right impossible because the actor class already is a class. It already is object-oriented. But without using our subclassing, we would, have to, we would have double the amount of code because we have to do everything twice instead of getting the borrow and lean on things. We're going to go ahead and make another class as well. We're going to make a class called Bullet. Bullet will also subclass Actor. And so our Bullet class is just going to handle all of our bullets that we need to do with our Actors. Okay? All right. So that's the idea. Look for these different classes. One, two, three, four classes. Here we go. Let's start with our first one. Do you remember how to subclass something? The subclass something, we simply put the name of the class right here. And Pygame Zero has several classes built in. Um, one of those is Actor. If you pull up previous code that we've had, you will see things like we made in our first Alien Click game, which you notice I'm going back to Alien, so, you know, Nostalgic. We said something like this. Don't write this in, but I just want to remind you. So we've been using the actor class for a while. Now we're going to subclass it. I want to go ahead and make some things that my alien will have, including, for one thing, a health bar. So I need to go ahead and make a constructor. If you can avoid making a constructor in a subclass, that's really nice because it cuts down on the amount of work you have to do. But in this case, I really think we're going to need one. And we're going to make a constructor that takes in three variables for parameters. So three parameters or arguments, normal, hurt, and dead. And those are going to represent the image that our alien will have when the image when the alien is normal hurt or dead now keep in mind this word self here uh, i don't really count that as a parameter it is just there because this is a class method it has to have it but if because i'm overriding the initializer from actor i need to make sure that i call the initializer initializer from actor or my actor won't be able to be drawn on the screen or anything like that so i'm going to say super underscore, underscore, init. And I'm going to go ahead and send a normal image to start it, okay? Um, I think you could also call it without one, but usually the actor class likes to have an image associated with it. So we'll start with the normal image. Now, this may sound weird that, you know, we're used to putting in quotes here what the image is. But keep in mind, we're writing an alien class. This alien class could be a blue alien or a pink alien, so I'm going to use variables to represent the image. Later on, we will supply the alien actor class with these image names in quotes of the file of the image files we want to use. We're going to make a health. Our alien will start with 100 health. 
I'm going to make some bullets. And we have dealt with bullets before in a list. Remember, to make a list in Python, you use open, close, square brackets that are located above the quote and enter sign on the keyboard. This list is currently empty. I'm also going to give my... Um, I'm going to give my alien a speed. And all the aliens will have this speed, but if we want to speed them up, we change them, and all the aliens will be changed. I don't have to search through my code and find the speed for one alien and then find the speed for another. We're making all aliens have this characteristic. I'm also going to store a permanent reference to these images called normal hurt and dead. Remember that these parameters are temporary. As soon as the code in the initializer is done uh, running, Python will actually delete them. So if I don't put self dot in front of them and store them in the self dot, then I'm not going to have access to them in other methods. I won't have them later on. They'll be gone. All right, well, that's it for the alien initializer. So the purpose of the alien initializer is to call the initializer from actor class and to create several um, instance variables, health, a list of bullets, a speed to travel by, and three different images that will keep stored for us. Now, we're used to calling update um, in our code. Remember that the Pygame Zero has several things that will happen every frame. So there's a what we call it is what we call a game loop. So the game loop, and you can actually change this game loop if you go to Pi Game. Pi Game Zero has a set Pi uh, game loop. Um, you know I've taught how to make your own game loop. I just you know it's a whole different lesson. But this is the way theirs goes. So the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to check several different methods. It's going to look for on key down, on key up, and on mouse click. So what this are something like that, like mouse move, something like that. It's going to call these these methods, okay? It's going to call all those and see what's happening to see what interaction the users have done. It's then going to call a method called update, which will update the location and logic of all of our actors. So actually moving them in their variables. Finally, it's going to call the draw. If you don't write the draw function, you're never going to see anything on the screen. So the draw function. So this is, this would be, then we would have, at that point, we would go to frame number one. Then this loop starts over. And this happens. It checks all those functions to see if, if the user is inputted, updates the location, and draws again. And now we're at frame two. And this happens, you know, between 30 and 60 times a second. Okay. That being said. Um, because of that, I'm going to use, I'm going to borrow some of this vocabulary and I'm going to use an update method so that we can, it'll make sense that when we write our update function for Pygame game for our game loop, we'll just call updates on our actors. So I'm updating self. Oh, you know what, though? Um, I have skipped something in my very important in my initializer. I don't know how I missed it. Uh, let's go back up to our initializer. We need to make um, a mapping for our functions. We're only going to do two. We've done these before called move. Use a curly brace, which is the same button as the square brace, but you have to hit shift. We're going to map up to false and down to false. Uh, we've well, seen up, down, left, right. Um, I'm not going to bore you with all that. Again, this is um, we do this to make the movement smooth, more smooth, less choppy. Uh, when we first introduced Pygame, we had to like spam the key just to get it to move a little bit. Now we can hold it down. So we have a mapping. So when I say self.move bracket up, 
it will give me this value. So we're going to start with us not moving up or down. And that'll make more sense as we use it. So here we go in our update menu. We're going to say if not self.image equals equals self.dead. I can do that. I could also um, do this. This is a this is a symbol for not equals. The exclamation mark means not. If self.image does not equal self.dead. But it's considered more Pythonic to do this. So we're asking, as long as the image is not an image of dead. So if you're dead, we're not going to do anything. Okay? If self.move up then self.y. Now where did self.y come from? Because we didn't make a self.y in our initializer. But remember we are inheriting most of this stuff from actor. Actors have a Y, an X, a left, a right, a bottom, a top, a, pos a POS, which is a position. We'll use that as well. They also have a collide rect function that tells you if it's colliding with something else. So we're going to update our Y position. Remember that zero, Y coordinate of zero is actually at the top of the screen. Okay, so but remember the top of the screen is zero. So we're going to go ahead and put... Um, we're going to minus self.speed. And I guess it's possible that you could be pressing up and down at the same time. So I'm going to do this. Now, you might want to think about this. What does I mean by self.move up? What, I'm, what that means is, I don't have to write this, but it means if self.move up, which will, this self.move square bracket up, will grab the value stored in this sub, which is currently mapped to false. If that is equal to true, then we'll change our y. But it turns out, I don't actually have to say equals equals true. You can if you prefer. I can just say if this, because that if this whole thing is true, you know, it will, it will, this will automatically call up what value is, is associated with up, either false or true. And if self.move down is true, then I'm going to actually add, because remember, the Ys get bigger going down. Now, we're going to need to do something else here, but we're going to wait and come back on that. We need to do this in a style of iteration. So I'm going to do a little uh, to-do manage bullets. Because we're actually going to manage our bullets in that class. All right. Now, our character is going to be able to be hurt. So this is going to be called get hurt. Or if you prefer, you can be a little snarky and write the, the method hurt self. Uh, but since I already have hurt as a variable um, up here, uh, I can't do that unless you change that name. So I'm, I'm, I have to say get hurt, okay? So I'm going to get hurt or get hit, something like that. And we're going to make it through you lose 10 amount of health every time you get hit. So self.health, remember minus equals 10. Remember what that, that means. It means self.health equals self.health minus 10. So it takes your current health level, subtracts 10 from it, and makes that your new health level. But the shorthand for that is minus equals. Now, there's going to be two options. We're either dead or we're alive. So if self dot health is still greater than zero then we're just hurt 
member self.image. I didn't make that variable, right? That wasn't one of my variables in my initializer. You can scroll up and check. With This is inherited from the actor class. This is how we set the actor's image. We're going to set self.image to self.hurt. And I'm also going to schedule with the pie game clock, I'm going to schedule something. So that will be hurt for one second. Then we'll heal after one second. Else, if we're not above our health, if we're not got positive health, if our health is zero or negative, then we're going to set our image to dead. Self.image equals self.dead. Now, if this doesn't give you some sort of a god complex, well, then you're just not having enough fun. All right. Um, now we're going to heal. Heal thyself, physician. Heal thyself. So uh, one of the things that I noticed about this is this is how I originally wrote it. So this function, this method will be automatically called for us. Uh, by the way, you may be wondering why I'm not saying like that. Because that would call the method immediately if you're scheduling something or binding it to be called on a button click or binding it to be called uh, in a certain amount of time like I am here. You actually don't put the parentheses on it, which means it can't have any parameters but self. Uh, so self.image becomes self.normal. But one of the things I found out was that when the alien got hit by two bullets in a row, if the second bullet killed them, uh, it ended up get setting their image back to heal because they got they would be they'd be hit and be set to hurt, then they'd be hit again and be set to dead, and then if the if they were dead within a second of being uh, hurt, it would then heal them because this 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 clock schedule unique heal is gonna happen, even if you get hit and your health goes down to five it's going and then you get hit half a second later and you're now dead well then if if there still hasn't happened yet it's going to it's going to it's going to call it and heal itself again so that was we were having some zombie aliens so the way that i made that was i went ahead and did one more check for this okay Notice how nice that is, though. Because I'm using object-oriented programming, I don't have to have some variable way out in, in no man's land. I know that my aliens have a self.health. I wrote it myself. It's right there. So it's easy for me to check if my, if my self.health is greater than zero. Okay? All right. We have another thing that we're going to do. We're going to need to do another one, okay? Um, def check for hit self and player and I'm going to say pass actually I'll just do it right here so to do so pass means um, I'm not writing this method right now, but you have to have something there. But I want to remind us that we need to come back and do this. But until we get ready for that, I don't want to do that yet. We'll come back to it. All right? Um, because we got plenty of things we need to check first. All right. So uh, let's try running our code. Uh, actually, you know what? We can't run our code yet. Uh, you will need to download the images, but we can't run our code quite yet because we need to we need to have PGZ run, and we need to have some aliens here. So let's make an alien first. Uh, if you haven't downloaded the images, then this will not work.
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and say self dot uh, alien one is equal to alien, and I'm going to give it three images: alien blue, alien blue hurt, alien blue dead, and I'll say pgz dot run or pgz run. I think is what it's called. Dot go. That's it. And uh, I don't have anything quite yet, but we will soon. Okay, so in order to see our alien, we'll need to have the draw function made. So notice this is just a function. It doesn't have self, and it's all the way to the left, because this is for our application, not for our alien class. I'm going to blit to the screen, which means draw a background. And I'm doing my star's image centered at zero, the upper left-hand corner, of which will be... Um, at zero zero and then i'm going to say just simply uh alien one dot draw and hopefully this will work uh and there we go so if you got that you successfully subclassed your alien now it doesn't do anything yet which is fantastic but there it is behold in all its glory your alien Okay, so um, hopefully you did have you were able to successfully make your alien appear. Um, we are now going to make a second class. So we're going to make another class, and this class will be called Blue Alien. This time we subclass alien. So all the code from actor was inherited, as they say, or downloaded into basically our alien class. And now we're taking all of the code from actor plus the additional code in alien and putting it in blue alien. Once again, though, I need an initializer. And I need an initializer in this case, most importantly, so that I can set the initial conditions for how my alien class will be will be called. So first, I say super. Okay, I'm calling this. That's my function to to access the super class. What method do I want to access from the super class? I actually want to access the initializer, the constructor. And our constructor. Basically, it's just going to take those three things right there. So you can just copy and paste them. So that our... Now, when we make a blue alien, we don't have to type in all that stuff. It's already going to be done for us. Also, I would like to set the position. Now, position takes what's called a tuple. So it's an X, Y coordinate. You have to put it in parentheses. Self.position is a variable for the center of the alien uh, that is uh, inherited from the actor class. Now, we're going to check this again, but we're going to get rid of all this down here. Okay? We don't need that anymore. Because we're not just making an alien. We're making a blue alien. And our initializer does not take in, in blue alien. Our, I'm trying to use the word constructor because that corresponds more with object-oriented theory. So that our constructor, you know, the init, uh, doesn't take anything in. It just, it just has self, so it doesn't take any parameters, so we leave this blank. It calls the alien constructor for us with all the parameters we need. So we should see our alien appear right there because we changed its position as well so we now have class blue alien um and and you know we can make more of them we could have several different blue aliens if we so chose all right well it's time to make this alien able to move 
And we do that by using our movement uh, map from each player. Okay, so um, why don't you take a second and quickly draw out the, uh, type out the pink alien, pink alien class. And I'd like your pink alien to have a starting position at the same height, 300, but uh, this is 100 in from the left, and our width is 1,000, so let's set the X value at 900. And I, when we make our aliens, we might as well give them a name that makes sense. We can call them blue. Blue is a blue alien, and pink is a pink alien. So go ahead and, you know, if, if you're following along at home, uh, pause the video and do it yourself. Right. Of course, now I just called this, uh, it changed my name, so I need to make sure that I do that. And I do that. Um, and make your class right there. Okay, so when you wrote your pink alien, subclass alien, we need to redo the initializer, the, the constructor. Sorry, I got to use a proper word. It's, that's the, what they call it. Uh, we're going to be doing alien pink, alien pink hurt. And alien blue dead. Uh, do remember the rules for Pi Game Zero. You can't have capital letters in your image names. So some of the images that I get from Kinney's uh, have capital letters. So I have to go ahead and change those in my file names. All right. And we're going to set the location. So this, we say self.position. We're going to say 900, 300. And uh, what I'm going to do is have you go to the class if you want and you can just copy and paste these two functions right here um and then this is i i wrote blue again i don't know why i'm got blue on the mind pink alien they should all be pink in pink alien sorry about that yeah and then um so when you go to copy and just it's on the post on the board, or if you want to, you can just try, type it yourself. We've done this kind of thing several times, and it's kind of repetitive, so I felt like we would just copy and paste it and explain it. So on key down and on key up are two functions. Notice they're functions. They don't have self, and they're not in a class, that are automatically called for us in between each frame. So whatever key has been pressed has a symbol associated with it that is in the keys, uh, what they call an enumeration. So keys dot S, all the letters are capital, okay? S, W, and then the up arrow and the down arrow. And what I do is player one dot move bracket down accesses this right here and sets it to true or, f or false. So when player one presses the S key, oh, why do I play, oh, you know what, I, okay, I said you copy and paste all that and uh, I'll fix it, I'll repost. Player one is gonna be, p no, player one is blue. Okay, I use player one and then I switch it to blue. This is why you don't change variable names. And then this is pink and pink and that's blue and blue don't worry i'm going to repost the right one don't worry pink pink and alt is blue i guess i could do a find and replace that would have been a cool thing to share with you all right there we go let me let me reattach let me repost all that Okay, I think I can just edit this, actually. There we go. Okay. Now, um, so when, when the S key is pressed, the blue alien 
remember, all aliens, whether they're blue aliens or pink aliens, have a move map. It takes their down and sets it to true. When they press W, it sets their up and sets it to true. I know these maps are a little confusing, but it's a way of, you know, linking two things together. We're assigning down with the true or false and up with the true or false. The up arrow will be for pink. Up is set to true when you press the up key, and when you press the down key, it's set to true. Those will remain true until a key is released. On key up is also called. So the on key up function keeps track of any key that was released since the last frame update. So if the S key has been released from the keyboard, then we set the blues down move to false. I also add a couple of fire here and we don't have that yet. So, you know, we probably should go ahead and let's comment those out. So I'm gonna go to edit and comment them out so that they don't run, because otherwise it won't work. Of course, as long as you don't hit those keys, it won't be a problem. I guess you could you don't have to comment it out. But I want us to see if we've got um, moving aliens yet. Well, no, we don't. Oh, because we haven't done the update. We have to do the update or they're not going to move. Okay? All right, so we've got our keys. The next function is going to be update. So def update and it's going to be pink dot update blue dot update that's it so this function is called automatically for us in between each frame and it calls the update method well, the update method was what we wrote up here, which simply accesses each individual's up, down, and tells them where to move. So we wrote it for ourself. But you need to imagine that when I say pink.update, that what's happening is instead of the word self, it's pink.move, pink.image pink.y, pink.y. Whenever you say pink.update, pink is what becomes self. When I say blue.update, blue becomes self. Uh, hopefully now we actually have some moving aliens. All right, I like it. You can play around with the speed too if you want. Uh, but I got some, uh, I like it. So now it's time for the harder part. Uh, actually making these aliens able to fight. I do think it would be neat if we had different looking images from when we were going up or down. And so I would love for you to consider that. Um, we, you would have to add another image to here so that you could change the image whenever uh, up or down is uh, being done. On the update here, we have we could change our images uh and then we could say you know if up if down and we could say you know if not up not and not down we could set our image back to normal i'll let you play with that if you want all right well the time has come uh we are going to go ahead and tackle the most challenging part of this which is projectiles i mean they, they're just they're a pain uh because you have to deal with the fact that they run off the screen and that they hit things. Collision detection, um, detecting when you're off the screen, things like that, uh, they're just challenging. And so I apologize if some of these algorithms are a little crazy. But I will say we're gonna do less repeating ourselves, And a couple of things we're gonna be able to make a little bit cleaner and, and neater. I don't know about easier, but neater with our newfound object-oriented programming. So a bullet. We're going to make a class for our bullet. And that's where we're going. You know, we really want everything to be its own class. And our class bullet should subclass actor. Anything in a pie game, anything that's moving on the screen, or anything at all that you can interact with, a platform and a platformer, 
or um, you know, a wall in a maze. It's an actor. All right, let's make an initializer for our bullet. Our bullet is going to take, and I want you to think about. I want you to think about the game for a second here. All right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all this for a second. I don't need that anymore. So we've got we got our different aliens, okay? And we got like uh, I think pink aliens gonna be over here, okay? And when pink alien is here and pink fires the pink bullet, it needs to start over by pink. But when pink is down here. It needs to start there. So we need to make our bullets appear at a specific location. Okay. So I'm going to make a location. One of my parameters for creating a bullet. I'm also going to have my bullet have a certain image. And I'm going to make my bullet have a certain movement. And I'm going to restrict the movement of my bullets to just the X direction, left and right. All right, I will call the super function so that I can access the actor class's initializer. I will send the actor class actually two pieces of information. We are allowed to send the the default location is zero zero. We've learned about default um, parameters already, but we can also send it a location just like that. Uh, you could say pos equals, but as long as we just give it that, it, it works fine. And then. I'm going to store X move here. So this is really the only reason why I needed this con this uh, special constructor is to store that X move. And I wanted to be able to give an image and location. All right. So let's talk about how we're going to update the bullet. Well, updating the bullet is pretty easy. We say self.x. That's the x coordinate of the bullet. Where did self.x come from? I didn't write it here, did I? That's right. It's inherited from actor. Every actor has an x location. There you go. We just simply take the x coordinate and we add to it x move. So you can imagine that since pink is on the right side of the screen, pink's x move bullets will the x move for pink's bullets will most likely be negative, right? So that it moves to the so that adding a negative will move it to the left. So that wasn't a very hard method to write, was it? I'm going to write one more that I think will be useful to us that I'm going to call on screen. And my goal of on screen is to return true if the bullet is located on the screen and return false if it's not. The left-hand edge of the screen is zero. The right-hand edge of the screen, we might be able to remember is 1,000, but instead let's just use the word width, okay? So we have zero on the left and width on the right. And our bullet is on the screen as long as the left-hand side, each actor has a has a self.left, and each actor has a self.right. As long as self.left is uh, at is you know within zero, bigger than zero, and self.right is is within width, we should be able to be on screen. So go ahead and try and write that method by yourself. Okay, let's see how you did. So I've got a little image here. Our screen. Uh, has as an x coordinate to the left of zero, and the right edge coordinate is a width of is a x coordinate width. It's actually all caps. Sorry, that should be all caps over there. And then each bullet has a left and a right. They also have an x, which is in the center. 
Um, and you can use X if you want, but I just wanted to remind you of left and right and how we could kind of use that to be even more precise. So let's take a look at it. Um, I'm going to say if self.left is greater than or equal to zero, that means my left-hand side is at zero or more, and self.right is less than or equal to width, Okay, uh, so if that happens, as long as my left-hand side is, is to the right of the left edge of the screen, my right-hand side is to the left of the right edge of the screen, I'm going to return true. Else, I must be bad. I will return false. Okay, and that's going to make it to where we can check easily if our bullet's on screen. All right. So, um, the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and make it to where we can fire, okay? So we have a bullet list, and I would like to limit our bullets to a maximum of three bullets, okay? So we're going to make a couple of methods and we're going to go have we're going to go down all the way down the blue alien and pink alien because each one of them will fire differently. Okay? And I'm going to make a couple of temporary variables so that people know what they mean. My speed for my blue alien will be 8. Because my alien is on the left-hand side of the screen. And I'm going to do max fire is three. Not that we can only fire three times, but that you can only have three bullets at a time that are active. Otherwise, you could just do one long continuous stream and it's and you, you what you you don't have a gun you have a uh, flamethrower which you know might be fun so um i'm gonna say if lin that means the number of items in a list is if the length of my bullet list remember our bullet list where'd this come from from alien if it's less than my max fire and if I am not hurt or dead. Now, that's my choice. That's why I want to make it. If you want to make it to where you can fire bullets when you're dead, then okay. Uh, if you want to make it to where you can fire bullets while you're hurt, that's okay. But I thought I added an extra... Di I tried it both ways. I like the dynamic of the alien um, having to wait till it was recovered from getting hit. Kind of gave that advantage to the attacker, Okay. So both of those have to be true. The, the, the number of bullets that are currently active, which is found in Lin self bullets, got to be less than max fire. And you, your, your current state, your image has to be normal. Well, if that happens, then we're just going to go ahead and fire a bullet. And this is going to be a lot of horizontal typing. I apologize. Self dot bullets. That's my bullets list. Dot append. That's how we, that's how we add to a list. Let me, let me quickly refresh your memory on that. Um, so if I have a list, okay, uh, called B for bullets, if I say B dot append bullet, you know, that's, that's what I have. And then I can do another one. And now I've got two bullets, uh, and the length of that is just two. Okay. So that would mean I could add one more in that case. So that, that's what the append does. So I'm going to append a bullet. Actually, you know what? Um, let me come back to that. I'm not going to do it all in one line. Let's make, let's practice making a bullet. I'll say B equals bullet. We're making a bullet object. Remember we wrote the bullet class, didn't we? Right there, right? Bullet takes a location, an image, and, an, and a movement. What is my location that I should give it? How about self.position? I'm giving the bullet the location of myself. Remember, this is blue alien. When blue alien fires, he creates a bullet at blue alien's position. What I need to give it an image name. My image name is blue bullet. 
Because that I gave, you know, you could use the same color bullet for each alien if you want. But that's the one I wanted. Plus, it's pointing in the correct direction. And finally, speed. We've now created a bullet, but we need to append it to our bullet list. Okay, that's we're done with blue alien. Now, the believe it or not, the only difference in fire between blue and pink alien the only difference between the two is going to be uh, this eight will have a negative and this blue bullet will be pink bullet uh, so maybe we could have put this in just the alien class but when I did that I had to have so many different variables it got confusing so I just went ahead and said, you know what? I'll just rewrite. I'll just write fire in each one of them. Okay. So we'll copy and paste. Go down here to pink. Yeah. I try and do things in the super class as much as possible. But when sometimes it just gets too much. So I just have to go down and just rewrite it. So pink aliens on the right. So they fire with a negative speed. And they fire a pink bullet. And that's it. Once we've done that, we'll need to add that to our drawing. So we'll go all the way down to the game loop. This is this is where our game begins. Okay, all that other stuff is just making, getting ready for our game. So we have to draw every bullet, okay? Sure. Sure. 